Hello and welcome to the 2017 paper 2 of the Junior Cert Higher Level. This is question 9 we're looking at today and I advise you to have a go at the question. Just pause the video, have a go and then see if the answer you get agrees with the answer on the next page. I'll show you that real quick. If you want to get a copy of these notes with the answers built in, please send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email is in the description below. So question 9 here with part A and B1 and 2. Um, part A here has got 10 maps going for it. The following three terms are used in geometry. The words corollary, the words proof, and the words axiom. It says write each of these three terms in the table below to match each term to its description. So you have a chance of getting these right by just BSing, okay? Um, but obviously we try to get as good a guess as possible. First one here says a statement that is accepted without proof. So it's self-evident or obvious. Okay. Second one is a statement that follows easily from a previous statement. Okay, maybe an axiom. An argument that's showing that a statement must be true. Okay. And it would be a series of, of, of arguments, whatever. So if I bring the three terms there, there's the answers there. An, an axiom, okay, is considered to be self-evident. Okay. Um, doesn't require proof. Corollary, okay, is taken from axioms. Okay, you can accept it as true based on, 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 on things that don't need proof. And then an argument of proof itself, okay, is more detailed, and we have a proof on the next page, on part C, I think it is. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, here's a good example of it, and I said it in the last video, for question eight. If you have time, uh, free class, whatever, and you're looking for something to do, pick a chapter, uh, maybe the chapter you're on at the moment in maths, read the first few pages and the explanation. I've often asked students, have you ever read those first page or two and they often go, uh, no, why? Um, the reason simply is that's where you get the background, deep information, and hopefully a deep understanding that will help um, you in the future. So part B here says, Salem writes the following statements, or whoever, whatever, name doesn't matter. If a shape is a square, then it must have four right angles. Part 1 then says, complete the converse of Salem's statement. What's the opposite of that, okay? So they have half the statement. If a shape has four right angles, then it must be a square. So you basically swap here around. Pretty handy. Part one, two are marked together. So that's at least probably the high six there for that. Part two here says, is the converse of Salem's statement true or false? What do you think? Just for your answer. Well, I'm saying it's false. The reason is a rectangle also has four right angles. So that's not a square. <clears throat> okay, so that's um, part B, part two. Now part C here is a proof. <clears throat> You're asked to prove that in a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal in length. Okay, this is a screen grab is taken from the exam paper. So they've filled in the sections you have to fill in. There's a certain number of proofs you need to look at in the junior short higher level. They're in the book, okay. I would suggest writing them on the cards. And it's one of these things that it's a slow burn. But if you're going on a journey or for some reason you have five, ten minutes to spare on a daily or every two or three days, you know, read through the different proofs and then test yourself, you know, sit down one night, can I do this, proof number one, proof number two. If you can't do it, you go over it again. And eventually you commit it to your long-term memory and when you're in the exam, it be easy to recall. Okay. So part two says prove, so you've read that, prove in the parallelogram, opposite sides are equal to that. So I've got the answer here, okay. So first thing you draw this diagram here, you got the uh, the parallelogram A, B, C, D, okay? And you're creating this diagonal between A and C. I'm going to use this to make our proof. So we're given the parallelogram A, B, C, D, okay? And to prove then that the length of, so these bars here mean the length of, proving that the length of A, B equals C, D, and the length of B, C equals A, A, D. If you can do that, you prove that they are a parallelogram, okay? Um, so construction, we're joining A to C, so making this diagonal. You then, it's not big, the biggest proof of the world, but it is five steps, okay? So in the proof, we're saying now that what's matters here is, what matters here is the letter in the middle, okay? So the size of, the length of, <coughs> so the size of the angle CAB, now CAB is this angle here, okay? So the angle created by that there, okay? Um, proven that that angle equals the angle 
A C D. That's the angle there. Okay. Um, we're also proving that the angle A C B. Okay. So A C B. I'm going to give this a different thing. Actually, a different color might help. And I'll go to whatever this color is here. Um, so the angle A C D. That that angle there. Now it's the full angle here. That that's equal to the angle CAD, so CAD, equal to that angle there. <clears throat> now the reason, you know, the reason for, it's very important to restate the reason, um, the alternate angle reason. Okay, so between two parallel lines, a line crossing them, okay, I have alternate angles and they're equal. Now step three, you're saying that AC is common to both angles, okay, and um, because of that, um, Angle, I suppose side angle, proves that the angle, the triangle, sorry, the triangle ACD, so the the this one here, okay, is equal to the triangle um, CAB, so this one here, because of angle, then side and angle. So step five that proves therefore, so it should have been therefore, the length of AB equals CD, the length of BC equals AD, because those sides AD, uh, sorry, yeah, AD equals BC because they're part of those two congruent triangles. And then BC equals, oh, sorry, um, AB, this one, long one here, AB equals DC or CD, whichever, gonna, whichever way you want to say it. <clears throat> now, that's the proof there. Should be the end of question nine. Okay, thank you, and see you on question ten.